Hello everybody, it's Dawn here from Dawn's Inspirations. Just wanted to share some scrapbook layouts with you um, and show you how to put them together just using a simple kit. This is the first uh, layout I want to show you. It's a very interactive layout. I've used the Teresa Collins memorabilia line here and I've used her file folders. I've never used file folders on a scrapbook layout before so I thought I'd give it a go because just number one to get lots of more photographs on a layout and also it just makes it more interactive so it's quite a good way of putting down an event or a day out. I've used this for a day out where I took my parents to the railway museum. Um, so what I've done is I've actually made the little um, embellishment here as well with paper clip and then this file folder folds down and then we have lots of interactive places, pages here to put lots of photographs on. Okay, so that's the, the first file folder. We then lift the little flower up here. This file folder then opens up the other way and we've got waterfall picture um, layout going on here. So you can see there again lots of space to put lots of photographs and also a space now for me to add my journaling. So it's a very interactive page. You can get lots on it. Um, and also um, don't worry about it fitting in your scrapbook album I'll show you how you can actually cut your page protector to accommodate this layout so that's the first layout I want to show you with the kit I've also gone ahead because I like to use all the papers that I get in a kit I've made a second layout here I've just kept this one quite simple um, use the papers I've rolled up paper here and added some baker's twine to give a bit more interest. This is the mini file folder. You get four file folders in her collection in a pack. So this is the mini one. I've put some baker's twine round it. And then as you open this up, there's plenty of space here for journaling spots, for adding extra photographs. So there's all spots all the way along here. So there's plenty of places to add things and that goes both sides. You can add more photographs here as well. So that's a very interactive page yet again. So that's the second 12 by 12 layer. And then to use all the kit up, the final thing you get is um, a large file folder. And I thought, well, this is quite a large file folder. I liked the wording on the top of this. And I thought, how am I going to use that on a 12 by 12 page? Um, I mean, I could have used it on a page but I thought well I'll make a mini album out of it because I didn't have any more 12 by 12 paper in the in the pack so I've made a little mini album so just using the scraps of paper that I had left at the end I've put together a little mini album here with lots of spaces to put photographs I haven't glued all these down so photographs can be slotted underneath so there's lots of places there for photographs and then on this side I've used another one of the acro clips here and there again lots of pages to add pictures. I've made a little pocket here that you can add photographs to, journaling, put tickets if you've had a day out and then up here again I've just added some more of the, the pages as well out of the kit. So there are three things I've made out of one kit. So let me go ahead and show you the kit that we've used. As I said, it's a Teresa Collins kit. And in the, in the kit that I got from Scrapbooking Kits or Us at the retreat, you've got a piece of 12 by 12 um, plain white cardstock, a piece of the memorabilia Teresa Collins paper. You had a pack of the file folders. So you get the little small one in there, the large one, the medium size and then another little one so you get four file folders in there I've also used some baker's twine uh, the 6 by 6 paper pad is the only extra paper that I've used in this but I've used the whole pad um, a flower for the embellishment and the acro clips and paper and the paper clip as well Okay, so I'm just going to walk through with you how we put this together because it's very easy to do and it shouldn't frighten you at all by doing this. Okay, I know some people prefer to do step-by-step -step scrapbook um, pages. They find it a bit daunting to, to actually go through 
and to start from, the, from scratch themselves. So we're going to start here with the orange file folder and what I've done here is I've done an extra score line so this is the natural line of the file folder itself I've already done this so this is the actual line of the file folder itself I've measured a quarter of an inch on the non-tab side and I put an extra score line and then this then makes it a bit fatter for you to add pages to your project okay so that's what we did with that so you need to score that on the bottom there to give that extra maneuverability to your to your pages there I've then gone ahead and I've used four of the um, pages out of the six by six pad here okay so I've used the first one here this black one and then I've used the stripe color one the green one and then the black with the flags and I've cut these all at different sizes the first one measures six by four so it's six inches across by four the next one measures four and a quarter by six the next one measures four and a half by six and the last one measures four and three quarters by six and then you bring them all down so the I've rounded the top edges so that it's the same as the file folder then you line them all up down the bottom here so there you've got like a tapered effect so you can see all the different colors in the file folder so what I've done is I've rounded those top edges butted up the bottom here so you've got the the waterfall effect and then I've cut another piece this is the out of the documented paper and I'm cut this at that would be six again and that was by four and a quarter because this is where I want to put my journaling and that's going to just go behind there so that's hidden journaling because I'm not over keen on seeing my handwriting all the time so sometimes it's quite nice to hide it so there are all your pages so what you need to do is you butt them all then down and then with your cropper doll you make two holes that take your acro clip now if you don't feel very confident with this, the other way you can do this, if I find my pencil, is if you line this up in the centre, I'm just doing this freehand, but just to show you, if you line it up in the centre, make two little holes, and that's where you need to use your cropper dial to make your holes for your acro clip. And then what we've done with the acro clip is we've threaded it through the back, so if I take all this apart you can see, So I'd already started this and I thought well, I'd do a tutorial for you because uh, a few people had seen the layout and they asked for a second tutorial. So then with the file fold we've also put some holes in the back here. So we've squared all these off and made holes through them and then you thread those through your acro clip. So the acro clip goes through the back of the file folder but don't worry because that is going to be hidden when that's on your page okay so bring that through to the, th the front put the top of your clip onto here bend that down slide them across you can pick these up from stationers i picked a whole box of them up so i've been using them quite a lot but they're quite handy for projects like this so that there is your first um element of this page layout okay now the sext, second element of the page layout is the waterfall file folder so for this you get the blue file folder and we're going to have this opened up the other way okay now for this with um let me just find my measurements here for you so for this we are going to make some little waterfall pages now all these pages even though they're stepped all measure the same they all measure three and three quarters by five inches so you need to pick three pieces of your pattern paper and cut them three and three quarters by five inches okay now you see when i've cut the pages i've cut this one let me show you here that's that page there but I liked that element so I've cut it up that way so just when you're cutting your paper just think a bit of how 
pages are going to look when you do it okay so that's that page and then what we've done is I've done a score line on all of these and I've taken a score line of a half an inch so on the top I've rounded off the bottom and then on the top I've done a half inch score line and then I've glued the first one done the same again and literally butt that one up to that one and stick it down butt that one up to that one and stick it down so you get the waterfall effect so if we look at that one on the main layout that I've done so if you look at this on, on the main layout so you've got I've actually cut the photograph here so it runs along with it but I've done a, a half inch score line then I've butted this one up to the edge of it and the same again with that one and the same again with the last one then you've got this space left and I've just put some of my photographs on there okay so there are your two elements and then what you need to do is you put your big um, file folder down and then you overlap your little file folder onto there so it overlaps so when this one is then closed it's not going to go anywhere when anybody's looking at it okay so we've made a tab with the flower so I just used a scrap of the paper that I had left when I was um, doing the layout I've attached the flower to this and then a because the flower was just quite plain if you remember wasn't a lot to it really I've um, put some stickles on here just to brighten it up really and then when you glue these file folders down don't glue all the way over the back okay so because this slides down the back here we're actually only putting glue down either side now I use the red tape for this because it was stronger and personally I think that works better when you're going to do a project that's going to be quite interactive and a lot of people are going to be looking at it so I've used this um, the red tape here for that so I've just literally put a piece of red tape either side of that to stick it to the main page okay now the same again with this file folder don't cover the whole back in glue because we want to be able to close this with your with your um, embellishment here so there again just put red line tape on three of the lines okay so then that will fold that that shut on there I'll show you how to make this little paper clip embellishment as well this is the little document I've got to slot that behind there and write my journal in because I haven't done that yet so I'll show you how to go ahead and make this paper clip embellishment find a piece of scrap paper that's black I'm sorry, is that, one? that one's not I'll we'll use this piece here I do so I'm going to cut this a little bit shorter I have put um, a little um, video of my quick tips on my website dawnsinspirations.com that also shows you how to make um, these little paper clip embellishments so if you don't get it this time there is another tutorial that you can see how to make one of these now I did have a paper clip here and that seems to have gone walkabouts as well this afternoon so let's take that out of there right so that's the paper clip so we're going to get the paper and we're going to fold this in half now you might think that looks really big on there if you're a bit concerned that it is still a bit too big you can just take your scissors and trim a bit more off but you don't need to worry about it fitting perfectly because it's the sort of thing that we can trim down later on now we're going to start folding this in so it's going to start folding in on itself okay so we're going to start folding it in and the more you work the paper like this the sort the softer it becomes it because paper's flat and you've got to encourage it so to say to work the way you want it to work so it just takes a little bit of time but this will this will all come together so 
So we'll just push all this in. Just keep bending it in. Right, when you're sort of happy with how it's starting to look, get your paper clip and it's a single end. Thread all the way through. Bend that over and then just tease that to that end and then just give it a pull. So you're pushing that down so you're going to make all these folds how you want them to be. So this is now where you tease out with your fingers. It is wider than you're going to want it to be but you can di dictate how you want it to look. We can trim it down so that's not a problem but we don't want to cut it to the dead measurement because then it doesn't look any doesn't look I, I think it's better done this way personally but because I think if you cut it dead flat it just looks it doesn't look very three-dimensional so that's now coming together and that side as well okay so now I'm going to put some wet glue on here and when you're putting your wet glue on poke a bit down in the corner as well as I say, if you haven't quite got it this time, it does take a little bit of playing with. Quite a good project to do when you're sat in front of the telly at night, making batches of these up. You know, if you went and bought embellishments in a shop, they'd charge a lot of lot of money, whereas you can make your own up in no time at all with a few, a few um, of the things you have in your own crafty stash. So that's our little paper clip embellishment. Now, if you remember on the page... I cut a little flag piece on mine, that is a lot bigger than that one, but there again it's entirely up to you. So we can do a flag upwards, downwards, so we'll do this one in again. So we'll just trim that in. Just trim that off there. Now if you've got any little bits like there that you can see the side, just trim them with your scissors. Okay, so when you're happy with it looking like that, I'm going to put my V in a bit more, pull that out. When you're happy with it looking like that, to finish it off, I've used my black Pro Marker all the way through this project rather than an ink pad. Get your black Pro Marker and just run it all the way along. Okay. And then that just finishes off your project. And also with the Black Pro Mark, it fits in very well with the paper collection that we're using. And then to top, put a little top embellishment on here. The paper collection in here, there are masses and masses of these little um, bits that you can cut out and put onto here. So that's all I've done. And then that makes your paper clip to go in the top of your... Um, big file folder to hold it flat okay so there are the two main elements for that page so a busy looking page that would probably think oh where would I start you can now see with the two file folders you've got your little tab in your embellishment the rest of it you add yourself from the paper collection there's lots in here as I said all these little all these little words and that are all die cuts out of here these are all mounted onto the back of here, not used to anything else. All these little words have all been taken out of here. There's lots and lots for you to be able to use in this paper collection. Okay, so that's all I've done with these. If you look at closely as well, you can see that I've literally bordered everything with my Black Pro Marker. I've just used the running along rather than an ink pad to edge all these, these bits just to make them stand out. I put some gems just on the corner there um, this is part of one of the photographs I took that was off one of the engines that I thought looked quite nice in the round element that was there I've cut strips off here so there's masses in this paper collection to use so that's why I say it's so neutral because you can take elements out of there that fit with the photographs that you're doing at the time now you may have noticed also that my paper looks like it's been mounted onto a piece of black 
Well, it hasn't. All I've done is use my Pro Marker again. I had no black card in the kit. So all I've done is use my black, black Pro Marker. And what I've done is I've got my pet my ruler. I've turned it over because I've got a lip on mine. Held it along the edge where I was happy with the thickness. Used the chisel end of my Pro Marker again to draw to make the thick black line. I'm not going to put it on here because it will mark my mat here. I usually normally put a piece of paper underneath. But that's all I've done. And then that gives you the illusion that you've matted and layered your main piece of paper onto a piece of black cardstock when you haven't. So that's utilised that. So actually, there's a lot going on on this layout, but technically we haven't used a lot at all. Okay, now as I said, you don't worry about it not fitting in um, your page protector. What I've done to uh, make it fit into a page protector is I'll show you here because obviously we want people to look at our scrapbook albums but also we need to protect the main parts of our scrapbook albums so what I've done here is popped it in the sleeve taken out these couple of elements now the bits you want people to be interactive with on this page are the two file folders themselves so then what I've done with a pencil is I've literally drawn just round the file folders okay so all the way along here up along this slip here all the way around here and down here then I've taken it out and then inside there I've slotted my craft mats and I've found the green ones fit the best in here so you slot your craft mat in there and then with your ruler my ruler's disappeared and a craft knife you then go along and just cut those lines I'm not going to bore you with showing you how to do it I'll set a video up on my quick tips um, on my website to show you how to do it properly but then what you do is once you've cut those lines out you're left with this sort of shape I think you can see it on the camera there in the lights so we're now going to thread the layout back in so you can see so we're now thread the layout into the sleeve okay so that fits into the sleeve and then I've tucked these bits just under there and then just go around and just tuck these now you've got the tab here so that can then go under there and just manoeuvre the paper just slightly under here okay round under this bit here and then we can slide our tab back in its place and then we can also let's just put that piece under there there we go and then this element can also go there so there's your layout in your page protector ready to go in your album so all these bits are protected by people looking at it but it doesn't stop the reader being able to see your scrapbook layout because you've got it interactive so please don't think oh, I'm using an interactive page I can't put it in my scrapbook album please you can so try and think a little bit outside the box and you can do it so that's that first layout that we've used okay so let's go ahead and look at the second layout that we've done here I kept with the same theme with these photographs again just using six by six paper so for the main background here I've used the chevron one if I can find it it's going to be the last one I want to look at isn't it there's the chevron one there okay and I've used the whole six by six sheet on the background here I've cut round my photograph and I've left a piece of the white border and then I've inked the edge of that just with some blue um, distress ink okay and then what I've done is I've cut some more of the elements 
from the paper collection because these are all in the paper collection so you can really go to town on this so cut all these elements out to, to do this and I've done this layout so your eyes drawn in a diagonal now the tubes here are all pieces of paper so I'll show you on a scrap piece I've got here so just using a scrap piece you could use a pencil I think I used a barbecue skewer but roll your paper round roll it round because you've got to make the paper go where it's not naturally wanting to do paper naturally wants to be flat because that's the way it was made but we're now going to make it want to be a circle or a cylinder or a tube so that's now looking a bit too big so I've now used a wooden kebab skewer and I'm going to roll it round now even tighter but that's why this page just literally came about because I had so many embellishments left at the end but I thought I want to use them but I didn't want to use a lot of paper because the other page was very fussy so it was just a way of using up some of the paper so round it goes keep making that as a circle okay and then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a piece of double sided tape on here now Cut that. Now we're going to have this all ready take one end off so we can see if that a bend put your kebab skewer in again Try and get a nice tight roll on this. Just take a bit of fiddling to do, but just try and get it as tight as you can. Because this paper is quite thick. The Teresa Collins paper is a very thick paper collection, I must say. Great quality though. I'm just going to then take my tape off, do the last roll pull out the kebab skewer and there's one of your cylinders okay and then what I did with these I used the baker's twine so I made lots of different ones all, all different colours and I graduated them and then what I did to attach them was to get a bit of red tape I lay it on the desk like so it's not going to stay put because I want it to put it on there might help okay so if you lay a piece of red tape out and then I gradually added my tubes so I had one there and I set one a bit further down, one a bit further down, one a bit further down. So that I, I then added those to my red tape. So I had then the double sided that when I stuck it to my layout I could take the back off and it would stick to the layout there. And then with the baker's twine to give it a bit more interest, if you can see I've gone round several times. But having the red tape one end, I didn't have any red tape on this bottom end. So... I could thread this round okay and then I could go along to the next one and thread it round again so say if that's another tube there I could then go around on this one and thread it round again and then you just bring it all up to the middle and you tie a bow round there okay just to give that little bit of interest on there so that's how I made that element of the um, layout. So let me just move this to the side now. So it's just a fact of breaking these elements down. Okay, put that out of the way. Um, the other element to this layout was the file folder. Now let's find the original. Is it still in the packet? So this is the original 
fold folder. So what I did with this, when you open it out, this pocket's all loose and I wasn't quite happy with that. So what I did was I just ran a little bead of glue along each of those so it would hold that still. That was the first thing I did. Okay. And then again with the baker's twine, before I stuck it to the base, I got the baker's twine and I put that behind there and stuck it to the back of the album and then you can then put glue all the way over this to stick onto there because then you can then tie your bow okay and then with this one inside I've used there again lots of the cut out embellishments that are in the paper collection as masses as I say there and then when you fold it out more of these are cut out I've left the gaps so you can put photos behind I'm just trying to find something I can slot behind so there's a pocket behind there so you can put photos you can put tickets you can put memorabilia of the day it hasn't got to be photographs you can do little journaling spots etc I've cut these out of the paper collection itself okay and then put that over and then on this side I made a little tag just out of the paper at the paper collection as well it goes in that pocket and then these little bits here are just the ends of um, the paper. You see like here where you've got the top ends of these paper. I don't throw anything away. So I literally cut those off nicely, cut them into a diagonal to give a bit of interest. And I put those on either side just to draw your eye in. Gives a bit more interest to your layout. So don't, don't throw anything away. I mean, I like to use everything in my kit. So I do tend to... Um, be a bit of a hoarder like that and I don't like to throw things away I like to use everything so I'm a bit of a thrifty scrap I suppose so that's that side and then on the other side where you've got the plain um, elements of your tag of your file folder you can put photographs here if you wish I mean I like the fact with the the words in the paper personally so that's why I've just left it like that and then there again you can tie that into a bow this can yet again go into a page protector for your scrapbook album. Same principle would apply. Okay, I would lay this into my protector. Again, I'll show you on the back side of this one. I would lay that inside there. But on this one, the only thing you need to have access to is the file folder the little file folder so what I would do is I'd do a pencil line all the way around the edge because you've got these tabs at the top your page protector could be tucked under that one at the back so I would tend to go across here so basically you're just literally cutting an oblong window from your page protector and that's all I would do because the rest of it doesn't need to be that still will be quite flat to go in a scrapbook album okay but it means the reader can then get to this because as you see from here just open this up again for you that's quite flat back there so if you cut straight across you see all this folds back on itself okay um, the only other thing I've done on here is I've done a little black um, just a doodle line really around the edge and I've just drawn that freehand with a pen that I use for my zentangling so it's just a freehand doodle line all the way around the edge and it fits in quite well with the paper collection it works well the black on the white and also it helps to just draw your eye in so it takes it away from the edge but also by not detracting from the main photographs in the layout so that's that second layout we'll have a quick look now at the uh, mini book that I made now this was just a, an afterthought that was made out of what I had left once I'd done my two layouts so I went through and literally picked out the big bits of tw um, 6x6 paper that I hadn't used so I hadn't, this was a 6x6 this was a 6x6 I hadn't used and so was this one so what I've done here is I've rounded the edges on this bottom one here 
I've done a score line I've kept the actual top of the paper there as well so that just gave me a bit more length if you like so I've um, then put some double sided tape on there to make that a waterfall effect so I've, I've brought that down as far as I can at the bottom and rounded the edges on that one the next one I kept the edges square because this paper here had the nice frame round it I thought well I'm not going to round those edges so I kept that one square and there again I used the top of the paper as I showed you earlier as the fold because I didn't want to detract from the frame itself so I used the top of the paper as the fold and then I used a strip of scrap paper to infill the gap so you didn't see that that was just the top of the paper so it's a quick top tip there again to use and then the same on the last one I've used a six by six again now I didn't want to hide these words by bringing this page too far down because I liked the words here so I brought this page further up now unlike the waterfall in the scrapbook layout we did I couldn't then butt the fold line to here because then I would have lost my words so I matched my words up this time with the rounded ends and then stuck it down and then again I've used a scrap of paper as an infill here okay and then the top here that wasn't a full sheet of um, six by six but I managed to use the flag top bit on here all the little um, tags here I've not stuck any of them down properly um, I tend to use these, I think they're absolutely brilliant. It's a Herma rubber um, runner and it's semi-permanent and you get these little square tabs come out of here and they're brilliant because I just stick those on there and then I can place things where I want them but then I can move them about if I'm not happy with it being there. So it's an easy way of moving things around to you're happy with where you want them. So until I stick photographs in I obviously won't glue anything down permanently so all of these are all free ready for me to move about when I've stuck the photographs so that's that side so that's the waterfall side this side we've done the acro the same as the first one so I have threaded it through the back I've used six by six paper on this one again these were a couple of more of these sheets that I hadn't used so there again I've rounded the edges, stepped them back, made the holes the same as we did for the first layout. So you've got a little booklet here. And there again I haven't stuck these things down yet. Okay. Inside here I had a little bit of this paper left. So I made a little pocket. So to make the little pocket all I did was let me show you on a piece of this so I've got the pocket so I folded this over on one side so you've got a little gusset and you glue the gusset down and then you've got this space to have as your pocket okay so that's how you'd make your pocket so it's just a scrap of paper folded over and then another tab of paper I've just slotted in there I can add photos onto that another bit there for journaling and another paper clip so I'll probably put another little flag top on that one um, I had a bit of the paper up here which I thought was perfect for journaling it says description of the event and the date so I've left that there and I've rounded off those edges and I've done the waterfall fold again here and I've attached this was another one of the cutouts from the paper collection so there again I can do some journaling on there I can write on here I can add photographs here there's lots of interest in this little mini book and considering that it was made out of scraps that I had left and the fact that I had this big folder left and I thought well what am I going to do with that that's a bit big to go on a, a 12 by 12 layout I'm quite pleased with the finished project so out of that kit of two sheets of 12 by 12 and the file folders and the paper pack I've made two layouts that are very interactive layouts and a mini book 
So I hope you've enjoyed it and it's given you a few ideas of looking at some of your scrapbook albums and um, your scrapbook pages in a different way and also hopefully making you look at your scrapbook pages in a more interactive way. So I hope you've enjoyed watching. I'd love to have your feedback and your comments if you like the pages or not. Do do let me know and if there's anything I can help you with with measurements etc please do help do tell me um, you can leave a comment below on the YouTube channel or you can hop over to Facebook and leave me a comment over on Facebook page it's uh, dawnsinspirations.com or you can look on the website dawnsinspirations.com um, and I'm doing it as a daily diary with the projects that I'm doing so you can leave a comment there as well and if you have a go, I'd love to see your photographs if you have a go. I love this paper range from Teresa Collins. I think it's fantastic. So uh, I'd love to hear your feedback. So this is Dawn here from Dawn's Inspirations. Thank you very much for watching and hope to see you again soon. Bye bye.